Today's video is a little different. I wanted to share with you guys just a small update. Now that we're two months into our process, how it is that we're doing. I wanna give you a little mental check in terms of where I've been for the past two months, in terms of busyness level, stress level, all the things that have been kind of weighing on my head. I also wanted to give you a few pointers as to how we're doing this and how we prepared ourselves to do this. And finally, I just wanted to give a little talk on what it means to me to be homesteading. Watch to the end, hear some funny stories or maybe learn something. Leave a comment below on what your thoughts are and tell me what your favorite moment from the Herbstead has been in these past two months. I'd love to hear from you guys. So enjoy the video. Welcome back to the Herbstead. And like I said two months ago, I quit my job. I quit my job, quit my full-time job. I decided to quit my job and try doing full-time content creating as well as urban farming. That's right. So if you guys didn't see that video back in the beginning of this year, I did quit my job in January. And we are now two months into our experimental year of me working full time on the urban farm, as well as our YouTube channel, The Herbstead. If you've been with us the past two months, you've seen one video a week and seven shorts a week, all of which have been extremely fun and very time consuming to put together. It has been a joy. There has been a lot of lessons learned and I hope that you could even say that it has gotten better and better as the months have gone by. Well, we hope for that to only continue. I hope for my skills to continue with video editing, with filming. I hope for the content to continue to increase in value as well as we get closer to the planting season. Of course, an urban farm in the middle of winter typically isn't exciting or full of action. Um, on the other hand, when you have a winter as easy as we've had it, well, I can do a little bit more projects. So you've seen me do projects like taking care of the chicken coop, cleaning out the chicken coop and making a new compost pile way over there. You've seen projects like me putting together a raised bed as well as planting into that raised bed. And with that in mind, I'd like to show you how far it's come. There is seedling starting. The impressive part to me, the impressive part about those seedlings that are just now popping out of the ground is that they've kind of kept in their rows and they're all pretty spaced out, which is nice. Maybe I spaced them out a little too much and you know, maybe I could have improved our crop by being a little more scientific or conscientious or maybe even over sowing and then thinning which we talked about that one video. But I'm proud of this. Uh, this is, to me, this shows progress. And progress over anything else is what I'm hoping for. Of course, you know, it feels great to get those big leaps and to make progress on a very fast timeline. But we have to remind ourselves, and I need to remind myself, that small incremental growth is much healthier, easier to deal with, and overall, much more sustainable. So, that's what we look for. Speaking of small steps done well, I would say that these fig trees are an example of that. This fig tree was given to us by, by Julia's grandma a few years ago, and these were last year's purchases, these Chicago hardy figs. Now, these Chicago hardy figs, they are eventually going to be planted out into our yard and they will be permanent fixtures in the ground. This fig up here, that's one that we're gonna to need to continue to bring in and out. But 
alone last year we got about four figs from this one. I'm gonna guess this year is gonna be more, maybe not abundantly more, but give it about two or three years and these four are gonna be just as big or bigger and they're gonna be producing much more figs overall. All that to say is when you're starting out, maybe slow growth to get you off the ground is better in the long run than that big explosion on satisfaction, quick fix of the big win. Another small success that we have already had has been an experimental planting where we took this grow tower and we put in some kale and some spinach. The plants were already maybe a little too small, but they've been out here for a week or so and we've had some cold nights that have gotten below freezing. Um, and you know, we know they're frost hardy, but until you actually experience it, it's a little different. So all of these plants have survived mostly and we plan for those to be providing delicious breakfasts in the coming future. We also were able to pick up a bookshelf from our next door neighbor who was throwing it out and are going to be upgrading our herb bed from this smaller model that was seen over here in the back, you can see, to this much larger new and improved model. We found that there's just not enough space back there we want more herbs, a lot more herbs. We want to dry them, we want to use them over the year, not just have them in the beginning of the year or in the middle of summer. So this is going to be this year's attempt at an herb bed, which we're really excited to fill up. So one of the big lessons we've learned is just that. It's finding the small incremental wins that are sustainable, that are noticeable, and yet that don't add too much stress to us, to me or to the family, that forces us into a place where we have to go back to what we were before I quit my job. Honestly, this has been a weird year, but kind of in the best way. What we decided to do in me quitting my job included things like stepping away from a large part of our financial backing in that we took a 50% pay cut as a household. Now, not everybody obviously is going to be able to do something like that without immediately having catastrophe. But let me tell you of the things that we did and are doing to survive this and try our best to thrive in it as well. Step one, budgeting. We did it. I know it sounds simple and sort of like intuitive or maybe you're saying like, duh, of course you did. But I know my generation well enough to know that not enough of us do that and do it well. Julia and I started doing that about three or four years ago. We had school loans, we had other things that we needed to pay off, we had credit card debt. So four years ago we started getting really serious where we tried to seek out more information about how to budget well. We stumbled upon some resources from Dave Ramsey which you might know, you might have heard of. We kind of dove deep. We watched videos, we listened to podcasts, we got excited, we got into Facebook groups. And long story short, we, we came out with a plan that worked for us and we're moving through that plan. Some of you may know it as the baby steps. Um, ours, we got to a place where the baby steps allowed us to have some security and then we have sort of stepped away a little bit from that so that we could do this adventure. But what that did is that allowed us to remove all debt minus the mortgage of this house and give ourselves as much margin as possible that even if the worst should happen, even if Julia lost her job today, that we wouldn't go under. That we would have enough provision to not go hungry, uh, for the power to not turn off, for any of our utilities not to turn off. 
um, for the kids to be fed, which is very important. Step two, side hustles. Selling just about anything we can think of. Uh, Julia creates wonderful products, and if you haven't checked them out yet, I really encourage you to do so. She also bakes bread for people around us and some other friends that buy them from us. Um, we sell some eggs just to kind of make a little bit here and there. Uh, and I also do some work, as you've probably seen from some of my shorts, I do some work with my dad. He owns some rental homes that from time to time need repairs, so I spend hours working with him, which I love. Those are things that we're doing to stay afloat. And finally, we're doing less. We eat out less. We go on less dates in terms of going out and buying a dinner. We have passes to the local zoo and the local botanical gardens, which to us is just as fun as anything else. But we don't really do a whole lot else. We were never raised to like the idea of not being able to buy something. That's a skill that we're practicing. It's not all bad. It's not all negative. It's not all humdrum. We are blessed with many opportunities around us naturally. Many parks near us, family nearby, as well as an incredible community here in our neighborhood. We walk outside our door typically and find that there's people playing in our yard and that's awesome. We are grateful for that community that we have been placed in and that we are able to build together. Final thoughts. Do I recommend this to you? I don't know. Maybe not. Don't do it haphazardly. And don't do it without maybe planning for a year or so, unless financially you're able to just go ahead and do it. Then do it. I have been busy. It has been not countless, but pretty close to it. Hours spent trying to learn this Da Vinci Resolve program, but it has been a blast. It's also been a trial in learning how to schedule my time now that I don't have a set schedule from some other outside source other than myself. It has been strange. And most of the time when I tell people what I do, I still get kind of a, that's kind of weird. Or I'll get like a, oh, cool. But every once in a while I get the, oh my goodness, that's awesome. And that is correct. <laughs> it is awesome. I want you to track over the next six months and see how things have changed. And I want that to affect you in some way. I'm hoping that this is an encouragement. I'm also hoping that you find out and glean from some of these videos that even if you don't do what I'm doing by quitting your job, you can still take on some of these things. In fact, I'm wanting to show you that it is easy to do small projects in short amounts of time that can change the landscape of your yard, literally, but also the landscape of how you view your own personal responsibilities, blessings, your own personal consumption. So maybe this is a little too meta, but if you step back and look at all of the things that you have seen from us, the Herbs Dead, hopefully you should begin to see that there is a bigger picture there is the picture of a couple that lives in an urban setting that is slowly transforming their lives, forming their lives around an idea, an idea of sustainability, of regeneration, an idea that maybe is a little bit slower paced. That's something that we value, a slower paced life. That's not something that's easy to come by especially when you're trained your whole life to value efficiency, speed, and cramming in as much content as possible. Heck, I'm giving you more content to consume. My hope is that that story is something that you are starting to see come together. And I hope that it's something that you are interested in. I am, obviously. And I want you to be interested in it.
not only because I think it's a valuable way to go, realistically, I want you to be interested as well because you guys are helping make this more of a reality. But I wanted to also be an example of how community can live together in a way that's maybe a little different than how our society thinks it should. Eat better food together, share burdens, and do so in a way that is regenerative for the environment around us. So we're two months in, and there's more stories to come, there's more adventures to come. I hope that you will remain with us and that you would even share this with others to get more people on board to see how this experiment turns out. We are excited for many things in the future, many more projects, many more challenges to do with you and to show you. So please stick around, and whenever you see our videos, if you like them, give us a like. And if there's ever any interesting content that we put out, give a comment. Share what you really liked about it, or ask questions, or tell us that we're doing something wrong, and tell us a better way to do it. Whatever it is, don't stop coming around. And remember, as always, grow on.